Good evening. My name is Lamia, and a few days ago, I put the address of Isabel Theater into my phone to find out how to get here tonight. I'm sure many of you did the same. The next steps, you'd know, you'd figure out whether you'd walk here, you'd bike, you'd take the TTC, or you'd Uber. It's unreal that this navigation exercise looked so different just a few years ago. We've come such a long way. But even in the digital age, there's still information that remains inaccessible. So while I didn't grow up in Africa, tonight I'm going to talk about my experience as a second generation Canadian. And I will focus on one reoccurring theme, the irony of unmet informational needs in a digital age and in a G7 country. And so before I do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself. I came to Canada at the age of four, and my family originates from Yemen and Ethiopia. While the two countries are on different continents, they share a lot in common. For example, both countries are known for the generosity and hospitality of their people. Both countries have the world's best coffee, <laughs> hands down. And both countries claim the Queen of Sheba. And so, even though my family was by no means middle class, this should demonstrate that I nevertheless grew up rich. Rich in culture, rich in custom, and rich in perspective. And for the most part, this, rich, this richness lent very well to an upbringing in Ottawa, where I was surrounded by many people like me. And whether they also came from the Middle East or Africa, or whether they came from the Caribbean or Eastern Europe, we, as a broader community of second-generation Canadians, experienced a lot of confusion and adventures together. For example, we all knew where to buy the cheapest calling cards for our parents. While our summers did not include cottaging or camping, we still had so much fun at the nearest basketball court or at the near nearest community center. We all assumed we, were, we couldn't get allergies or we couldn't get sunburned. And while we never got to bring Lunchables to school, We all went to the same shawarma joint that sold the city's best potatoes. Good times. And throughout elementary and high school, this camaraderie fed my soul. But on a more serious note, we also shared other things in common. Parents without higher education working multiple jobs, parents not knowing the difference between academic and applied courses in high school, which is so critical, limited access to tutors or extracurriculars that enhance skills like confidence and teamwork, and no editing support for essays or personal statements. And so why then does information become so important in this context? Because for many second generation Canadians, they will face a lot of obstacles along their trajectory. And a lack of information should not be a compounding obstacle. Let's think about it differently. Society pays a premium for the advice we get from experts be it management consultants or lawyers. 
These experts are in the business of imparting know-how. Let's not take for granted the power and weight underpinning familiarity with Canadian systems. It's a different kind of know-how. It's Intel. And for many second-generation households, this Intel is far from intuitive. Knowledge gaps become an added burden to realizing the Canadian dream, which at best can lead to frustration or feeling lost, and at worst, unfulfilled potential and a precarious existence. Information goes such a long way because it literally translates into a successful job interview, graduate school admission, overseas placements, do's and don'ts, all of which diversifies candidate profiles, broadens horizons, and catalyzes upwards mobility. And why is this all important for this segment of the population? Because in an increasingly diverse country and globalized world, diversity brings a lot of significance to our society, socially and economically. In 2015, McKinsey and Company released a report titled Diversity Matters. It showed that companies with a higher degree of racial and gender diversity perform better, much better. And this is in terms of higher financial returns, enhanced strategic decision making, and improved customer orientation. Our cultural environment also tells us the importance of diversity. Shows like Master of None, Insecure, and individuals like Trevor Noah, not to mention figures like Barack Obama and Malala Yousafzai, clearly demonstrate the contribution of diversity in terms of perspective, impact, and influence. Canada is ethnically diverse. By 2031, 32% of Canada's population will belong to a visible minority group. That's over 12 million people. And this diversity is what makes Canada unique. But what will make Canada even more unique is if upwards mobility is accessible to all Canadians. I want to see more of my community in Canada's former labor market. I want to see my community in Canadian top 20, top 40 lists and not just during the month of February. And so tonight I'm placing emphasis on one solution, how we can collectively fill unmet informational needs and bridge the gap between the known and unknown so we can lock, unlock indiv individual potential right here at home. And while I am by no means a philanthropist, I do have two assets at my disposal, my time and information I've picked up along the way, based on my achievements, and more importantly, based on my lessons learned. So I ask you to join me over the world's best coffee so we can have conversations that share information. This way, navigation becomes less about trekking an overbearing avalanche and more about mapping a path forward that, while bumpy, is exhilarating and at its very core, truly and consistently Canadian. Thank you. <laughs>